All right, folks, welcome back. This is episode 18 of the continuing series of the ICT 2022 YouTube Mentorship. All right, so we are looking at the Euro dollar. And what you have here is how I have my trade layout. This is what I work with while utilizing my charts through TradingView. And don't be intimidated because you may not be able to do this with your trading view. Uh, there's a, I think there's a membership level you have to have. And again, I'm not trying to promote, I don't get anything for you signing up with trading view. I don't have any affiliate programs, nothing like that. I don't have any, you know, programs that I'm trying to pitch. I just like the service. Okay. I pay for it out of my pocket. You don't have to owe me any favors. So, but I have it set up like this when I'm looking at the marketplace, the upper left hand corner. Now you, you can do this with individual charts and you'll see what I mean by having one laptop, one screen. If you do what I'm going to show you here today, you don't need all these screens, but I've been asked to show this both in my private group and in the YouTube community. What do my charts look like when I'm going through the motions of looking for trade setups and how do I navigate from higher time frame down to the lower time frame and how do I work with daily bias and what do I do with my charts to streamline the analysis from high time frame to low time frame. I'm going to show you that in this lesson here. All right. So upper left hand corner is always going to be the daily chart. As you can see here daily. Now, if you're looking for bias, you're going to start your analysis here. Now you can do it with the chart maximized like this, start working with it, doing all of the business that you would expect to have in your chart. And we'll do this here. Shout out to my mentorship group, private group. I mentioned this on Wednesday's midweek commentary. A little bit of hindsight. Done right. So we have fair value gap there. And notice that it has this high, that low, and that higher high. Many of you would see that as my bearish breaker. Mm -mm, it's not. Okay. So look at this here. Which is lower? Is it this low here or the discount low of the fair value gap? In other words, this candle's high. Clearly, it's this candle's high. So I'm going to tell you something I told my private group last night because I can tell it to you now. It's not advantageous to you. It was advantageous for them because they knew about it yesterday. But I'm showing you this because I have a lot of witnesses that I said this before it happened. Because I know some of you out here, unless you were there watching it, okay, you just simply won't believe it. And that's fine. I'm not here to convince every single one of you. You're either going to believe it or you're going to watch somebody else's channel. Simple as that. But the fair value gap in here, I mentioned that we would likely draw up into that and then look for lower prices. Now, let's step by step walk through a scenario using what I'm teaching you in this mentorship on the YouTube channel. Okay. I responded to a lady on the comment section of, I think it was the most recent video. So forgive me if it isn't that video, but I know I mentioned uh, a response to her question was more or less, I'm going to paraphrase it. Can I touch on or teach a specific approach to trading? Or can I mention rather a specific style of trading that if I only had to pick one way of doing it, one style of trading, that obviously hits all the time. Well, there is no method that hits every single time. Okay. Everything that I trade with and teach is like everything else. It's imperfect. That means there's going to be losing transactions largely because of the operator, me or whoever else is using it. And it, you have to take ownership of that. It takes a great deal of responsibility. And I kind of lectured on that in my private group on Wednesday. It doesn't feel good to hear those types of woodshed lectures, but it's something that I needed when I was younger. But if I was going to use one particular approach to trading, like say I was starting completely over, didn't know anything, but I discovered like say this YouTube channel, 
knowing what I know about all the things that I can utilize in trading, the reason why I stripped it all down and created the model like it is, and you're going to see more of it being applied here today. So it gives you like a step-by-step a -step approach. And there's some of you are asking, can you just kind of like show me what it is I'm trying to do in the charts? Like, what am I looking for? What's, what's a way of back testing? You know, how can I go through and look at old data? I'm going to show you something here, but it was also given to my community yesterday. Okay. And if I see a bunch of comments in the comment section saying that it wasn't really done, I'll just simply upload the video <laughs> and prove everybody that says that wrong. So I'm ready. I'm ready for it. So the long short is it's not a big deal. It's not a huge trade, but it's proving prognostication. It's proving that number one, I've already hinted that this thing was likely to go lower anyway, and we've seen it go lower. But utilizing the model, this model here in the YouTube 2022 mentorship, that to me is the easiest. And I would just do this. I wouldn't worry about doing anything with like uh, central bank dealers range. Okay, I wouldn't worry about doing anything with Asian range. I wouldn't even worry about doing anything with the, well, there's a, a, a anything else. Unless I've mentioned it in this model, I wouldn't even do any investment of time at all because this literally is the simplest way to work with intraday and daily order flow. It's simple. It really is this simple. It doesn't feel sexy though. I know some of you young guys are like, yeah, but wait till he starts bringing out all the really hard hitting you know, gadgets and such. You're going to be floored by that. No, you don't need it. I don't want my daughter inundated with all that stuff. Number one, she's really not interested in trading. So I'm trying to convince her that she can do this with something. It's very simple. It's streamlined. So what does that mean by streamlining it? And what is the step-by-step -step process? Because I already told you the bias I've had on this currency. When I taught on Tuesday, I gave you a Forex lesson. I showed you an example with the Euro. I said it's likely to draw into this low here. Now here's the wonderful thing. We don't even need it to go down to that low to find profitability. How's that? How is that possible? How are you able to responsibly handle daily bias work with the higher time frame, and then frame out a setup using the logic that I'm showing you in this model. Let's do that now. Number one, the bias is bearish. So if a bearish bias is being implemented, okay, in other words, you're using that in your analysis. You're going through the charts looking for setups that would warrant a short sale on this particular market or this pair in Forex. What I'm showing you here, all of this up to now, if I make a transition to index futures trading, I'll mention certain caveats when it comes to that. But for now, everything I'm saying in this video, until I say otherwise, is pertinent to Forex. Okay, so it's specific to Forex. All right, so bias is uh, bearish, and we're looking at a daily chart. So you start your analysis there. You have a fair value gap here. So it can trade up into that. and all you have to see is that candle traded to there. Now you can be greedy and try to trade all the way up into the middle point or deep into it, maybe in complete closure. I don't need that. And we're gonna bring in the element of time of day and how that helps you decide what you're looking for. And you don't really need to catch that high of the day either. So I'm gonna show you how to be forgiving with your entries. The important thing is knowing what you're looking for ahead of time so that way you're not changing gears back and forth intraday chasing an impulsive price swing that may feel like oh i'm probably wrong let me chase this let me chase that when i showed the three months live trading account statements what some of you are not listening to when i say it in the video listen to the videos okay when i'm showing those statements i'm disclosing the fact that i'm getting questions by my students these folks have paid me okay they asked for me to show them things in a live account you are not privy 
to all of those conversations because you're not in that community. So when they're asking me questions like, what do you do if you get this, this, and this, and this, how would you work with that in, in a real market? I'm literally putting myself in a live account, creating those very sim similar situations that they're asking me about, and then moving out of those periods of either drawdown or how to overcome the, ang the anxious, I don't want to take a trade, I'm scared, or what happens if you take losing trades, how do you overcome that? A lot of those executions you're seeing is just simply me pushing a button to show that, yes, you can do those types of things to overcome initial fear. It's going to cost you commission. It's going to look like you have no idea what you're doing. And there's people out there looking at these statements. I've encouraged all of you to do it, but it isn't going to mean anything to you unless you understand what I'm really illustrating there. You're not the student that was spoken to in private with that live account showing that actual event unfolding. So just know that there's a lot of things that are going on that are not necessarily your business, okay? The community here wanted to see a live account. You've seen a live account. But working within a live account, unless you do things like I'm going to show you here, you're going to have this changing of direction, intraday, over and back and forth, back and forth. You're going to go up, you're going to go down, you're going to go back and forth. And then it's going to draw your account down or worse, if you don't control yourself, you'll blow the account. So you have to commit to one direction. That's your bias. Here's the thing. Your bias isn't going to be perfect. And here's a newsflash for you. You as well. I'm not always perfect with my bias either. A bias is just an, an idea that you want to work within and employ your short sale when you're bearish or employ your long trade ideas when you're bullish and you're filtering out the other side of the marketplace. Unless you're proven clearly that you're absolutely wrong, you just simply wait for these setups to form with that bias in mind. Now, I know a lot of you are new and you want to see things taught to you that simply remove any chance of you losing. There is no secret for that here. Nobody's going to teach that to you because it doesn't exist. And frankly, if someone had that, I'll be real honest with you, folks. If I had a way that I would never lose, I would have never came out publicly and became a teacher. I would be the richest person you never met. <laughs> That's the God's honest truth. That's exactly what would happen. And if there's somebody out there that has some kind of a means of never losing, they're doing that very thing. You're, they're never going to talk about it. They're never going to teach it. So you don't need to be perfect. And I've proven imperfection still doubles the account. It's simple. And you can have a lot of losing trades. And this is one of the things that one of my students asked. They said, what if your win rate is really, really low? Can you still double an account? Yes, because I was thumbing my nose at this idea that a risk to reward model is essential for you to be net profitable. That's not true. I've proven that with a live account. I have lots of things I'm going to show you with this TD Ameritrade account before the end of the year. But just know that there, there are future lessons that I'm going to literally go through and show you not everything, obviously, because you're not, I'm not obligated to show you everything that the other community is entitled to. But I don't need to show you everything to see that account growing. Now, the question is, is what do you do if you're in a live account? Let's, let's paint a picture for you, okay? Say you're one of those individuals out there that have got caught up in the fever of all these funded account programs, okay? I'm not going to name any in particular because I don't have an affiliation with one. I don't want an affiliation with any of them. And I don't have any personal experience with my own trading with any of them, okay? So that way we know I'm not repping anyone. There's no inside you know, kick back for me, none of that stuff. But there's a number of them out there. And my opinion of them is I have students that have gone through them and they are funded. Do I believe everyone should do that? I don't personally believe everyone should, uh, but it is an avenue that you have to consider on your, on your own. See if you want to do that or not. But let's assume that you've gone through the process and now you have 
past whatever that, you know, I guess the challenge or whatever they call it to get funded. And you found yourself with a, let's say a hundred thousand dollar account. In other words, you have the ability to trade with what would be considered a hundred thousand dollars. What process, if it were me doing that, okay, that's, I'm going to speak in that perspective. Now, I'm not saying you should do this. Notice that what I'm saying here, if it were me and I was starting out all over again, I would use this model and I would go through the process of what I'm going to show you right now. Okay. So bearish uh, daily bias. And I'm going through the daily chart and I'm looking at recent price action. So we had this big drop down here, drawing towards this low. And then the next day we had this candle trade up here. So that creates the fair value gap. So ideally, you know, what we've seen here, we had one, two, three, four, five down days. Now there's likely to have a retracement because we've, seen it come way down in terms of the range between this low and this high. So what does that make that area down here? Premium or discount? Discount. So as soon as this fair value gap forms, we know that it's likely to see it rally up into this area here. In other words, a short term little bounce. That occurring and trading back to this candle's high is enough to set the stage for a new round of selling. So you highlight your area on your daily chart and then look at what we have in terms of targets. This is an ideal scenario, that low, but it's not likely to do that in one day. Can it do it? Absolutely. But look at what is available in terms of targeting. This day here, it created the fair value gap. So that means we can go in and note that low right there. And we'll change it to blue here. Okay. And we're going to put a little line segment here on this daily candle. And we'll mark that one red. Okay. So we have more or less a premium level that's being highlighted. And you can see it touches it, but it actually goes above it just a little bit. And that's all we'll need to justify a framework. Okay. Now, let me recap real quick. Bearish bias. We're likely to draw down to this low here. Why? Because we had one, two, three times, like I mentioned on the video on Tuesday or episode 17, if I'm not mistaken, in this mentorship. So it's likely to draw lower and dig into this low. That's our draw on liquidity on the daily chart. But is that your trade target? No, not for intraday trading. So you frame your daily highs and lows, previous daily high, previous daily low. So we have this day here, you know, yesterday's trading or what we would considered Wednesday's trading. And then Thursday's trading, we opened here, we rallied up, popped just above that short term high. And now because we've seen that, we can target that daily low right here. Okay. So this is the trading day on Thursday. We open rally up, create a Judas swing, run back into this fair value gap and then expect it to sell off. And then we can aim for that daily low. Why? Because anybody that went long in here, who would want to do that? There's always buyers and sellers. Okay. So we're going to use previous days, highs and lows like institutional mindset traders do. There's lots of liquidity around daily highs and lows and high frequency trading algorithms attack previous days, highs and lows. If you were back in the baby pips days, when I came on the scene, 2009, 2010, that was the first lesson I started talking about is highlight the previous day's highs and lows and do that for the last three days. If you do that, you'll see a plethora of setups that you can do. And that gives you liquidity pools that you can attack. You, there, there's always a fresh supply of new setups. If you're looking at the last three days, highs and lows, it's always the case. It's always going to be there. You're never going to run out of trades ever. Okay. So we have our framework here. We have the, Actually, let me change this blue to that green. Okay. So we have premium and discount. So these two levels are represented on the high and low of Wednesday's trading 
which would be yesterday's trade. In other words, your chart would have looked like this. Wednesday going into Thursday before Thursday started trading. You'd have this. So you would mark your chart out like this. So if we go up here and we enter this fair value gap, that's your opportunity to go in looking for shorts. Then if it starts to go down, you're targeting this low. With the expectation, why is it likely to do that? Because it may want to go down to this low, but this gives you a nice range of profitability, potential profitability. So a range of, we'll just call that uh, 935 to a low of, what is it? What's the low here? 74, so 25, six, we'll call it 60, 60 handles. Okay, not bad. That's a pretty respectable range. Can you get 25 pips out of that? Can you get 30 pips out of that? How about 40 pips? Well, we're going to find out. But this is the range of opportunity that exists looking at Wednesday's trading. And then Thursday we open, we rally up, we bump that high like we would expect trading back into that fair value gap. And then we watch price. Does it give us a setup? What setup? What I've taught you in this mentorship. So we're going to drop down into the lower time frame. If you have this layout like this, so whatever you do in one chart, it would appear in all the other time frames, which is really nice. This is one of the things that I'd like to use in TradingView. Not that TradingView is the only platform, because obviously you can do this with everything out there today, but it's just really nice to be able to do this with all my students. They can do the same thing. But if you're working with one screen, like a laptop, and I'll answer this while I'm talking about it, should you be trading on your phone? No. No, you shouldn't. Can you manage a trade on your phone? Yes. But entering a brand new position on your phone, no. You don't see enough data. It's just too compressed and you need to be able to see the lay of the land. Okay. You need to be able to open your chart up and really take in the information. If you don't do that, folks, you're really just looking at a small little, small little perspective, really. If you want to have advantages, you, you do it with a computer screen. Okay. Um, if you want to be handicapped, then obviously try to trade on your phone. Okay. I have not met anyone that has been consistently profitable and trading millions of dollars and they trade on their phone. It just, it, it doesn't work like that, folks. You got to be responsible. You have to have some real estate. And it, yes, it requires a little bit of an investment, but hey, you don't need all kinds of things. You don't need all the screens like I have and other people I have out there. I'm showing you how you can do this with one screen, one monitor. So, what would that look like? Obviously, you can see everything I did on the daily chart is transposed onto the hourly chart down here in the lower left-hand corner. And it's transposed over here to the 15-minute time frame. So the time frames are upper left is daily, lower left is hourly, and 15-minute time frame is only right. The 15-minute time frame is my bellwether chart. That's the one that I go to quickly. I want to keep referencing that 15-minute time frame throughout the day. Because the information I get from it, which I'm going to show you, is influential to me in terms of managing my position or hunting or stalking a new trade setup. And also it helps me trust my intraday bias. And I'll, I'll explain that when we get into that specific time frame. But let me go back for a second to the daily because I want to bring something up. If you're using one screen, okay, you would obviously do this annotation here and then in this screen you would just simply change it to the hourly chart and then everything you did here would be transposed over to the trading view chart that would be on the hourly chart rather and then once you've done whatever breakdown and markups that you would have for your hourly chart then you would drop down to the 15 minute time frame and all of the annotations from the daily and the hourly would appear on your 15 minute chart as you'll see Okay, so let's go back to the layout, and I'm going to maximize the hourly chart. All right, so I like to do these types of things, bring it to the actual level I'm anchoring to, because I have obsessive compulsive disorder, so it is what it is. It's a struggle, folks. So in here, it's this imbalance 
on the daily chart, but now we can see it also exists in the hourly as well. So we have what? This high and this high. What are they? They're relative equal highs anchored to that point right there. Okay. So usually in my annotations, I'm going into the chart and this is for the purposes of showing you how to back test and how you annotate your chart. You toggle it to show on the top left and you can use whatever color you want. And there you go. So we have the annotations that would be on your chart for logging purposes for your study journal. And then you would just screenshot this. Okay. You might want to zoom in a little bit, you know, make the uh, chart a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Having something like that, more, you know, more information zoomed in to a specific area. And then simply go in and start working with the 15 minute time frame because this is all I would do with the hourly chart because the frame of reference is that daily fair value gap. We have liquidity pool on the hourly chart. We've already mapped out the 6th of April's low. Notice there's no lower low. This low didn't go down to it. And we start a new day on the 7th here at midnight, New York local time. What do I mean by New York midnight? I'm going to answer that. <laughs> Let's go to the 15 minute time frame here. And as you can see, we already have that little annotation updated on the 15 minute time frame. So now here's the 15 minute time frame. And I apologize for all of you that would otherwise know how to do this, but obviously it's a mentorship, right? And there's a lot of people in the comment section that are asking for these types of lessons. And once I go through this, this episode, we won't ever have to revisit it again. Okay. So bear with me. Okay. All right. So now we have on the 15 minute time frame, we're going to annotate the daily dividers. This all is a little vertical line. Okay. And this little bar here is just my favorites bar. And you can Google that for setting that up. These are the things I use most in trading view. So when I expand the chart to maximize the full screen, I highlight the little star button in the lower left hand corner just below the little link button. If you click that link button, any chart you have open that's the same symbol, any all the annotations will be pl plotted and placed on all the time frames of that instrument or that pair or that market. So in other words, if like I was showing you with my trading layout, upper left hand corner daily, hourly, lower left hand, and 15 minute time frame on the right, that's the biggest chart. Hitting that little link button icon will Again, link all your charts together. So whatever you're showing annotations on, on one time frame will appear on all of them. That's how this is happening. Okay. You can Google that too. And there's a lot of uh, tips you can get off of YouTube for uh, trading view. Most of my tips I actually got from my students, which I appreciate because they're more fluent with this. Um, I came from MT4 and TradeStation. So I, it, I'm a work in progress with uh, trading view. So, so you're going to drop a vertical line here to delineate a new day at midnight. What is the opening price at New York? Midnight. That's this candle and you highlight that and this price right here, that right there, if you're looking at the time frame on the hourly, that would be the opening price. I'm interested in that on a 15 minute time frame or if I'm going to be scalping, I'm going to use the five minute chart. Okay. And then I'll put two reference points on the five minute chart. But for the sake of this discussion, just know that that's the actual price I'm looking at. And I'm drawing that out in time. How far am I drawing it out? 11 o'clock in the morning, New York local time. How do I know my chart's going to look like ICTs, right? That's what you're asking. You toggle it to New York. I don't care where you live. I don't care where you're at in all the different time zones. Your trading view chart needs to be set to this. If you do that, your chart will match all the things I'm teaching and the things I'm teaching you to look for will be easier to find. Okay. Everything will be streamlined in terms of time of day. All right. So now we have the buy sell liquidity pool, the daily denomination of midnight New York time. And we're going to take a little 
line segment here and we're going to plot it right on here. Now I'm just going to just rough it because it's basically a little tiny indecisive candle. I don't care the difference between the actual open and close. It's very minute. But I'm going to draw that on here and if you drag your your trend line over to the right, if you hold down the shift button, it'll keep your trend line straight. Okay, and just drop it there. And I'll just make this a gray color here. Now you can annotate that, but over time doing it, you'll just know that that's what you're anchoring and showing. This is the opening price at midnight. Okay. Now we have the relative equal highs here. We rallied above them. Once it hits this, do we get displacement? Now we get down to the nitty gritty. Okay. We have a swing low here. It breaks down below that. And then once it does that, does it create an imbalance? Is there a fair value gap? Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> you see that? All right, so we're going to annotate that. So inside of this range here, we have a fair value gap. And I'm going to highlight this. We'll just use this color here. Now, these are probably not the best colors. You're probably cussing me right now, saying, why are you using these ugly colors, ICT? And it's mainly just to annoy you so that way you can get more attentive <laughs> and pay attention because this is a long video already. So we're looking at the market wanting to go higher first to go lower. And here's that midnight delineation starting a new day. We rally up and then we break down. So what's the model teach? Trading when? The New York session. Okay. So we're trading the New York session in Forex. It's seven o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock in the morning right there. Okay. So 10 o'clock in the morning and seven o'clock. So we're looking for a setup that would be formed within that time frame. Now you can create kill zone windows annotations on your chart. There's lots of ways I've done this over the years. You can do it whatever way you want to do it. Inside center, and we'll make it black. And there you go. So the New York kill zone, it runs up into that, runs the highs, and we want to see a displacement to the downside. We get it right there. Okay. So now you have this area here. And then you would put your order in right there. What time is that? It's 10 o'clock. So you put your limit order in to sell short right at that price right there or plus one pip period. And your risk is going to be above this high. The imbalance is really stretched out. You can use that as your stop. If you're really concerned, you can put your stop above the swing high. But whenever you have a big range like that, my stop can place right there. So your stop would be here and you're going to go short here. That's the minimum expectation using the 15 minute time frame. But we're going to split the 15 minute time frame down into five minute intervals. Okay, so we're going to look inside this range here and see if it's advantageous for us to go down into a five minute chart. And does it have a fair value gap in that? All right, so we're looking at the five minute chart now and it's that shaded area here. So it's using this specific candle or that low. And we're looking inside this range right here. Okay, so it's this decline we're looking at. Does it have fair value gap? Well, we have this small one right in here. See that? We have this stretched out one here, yes. And then we have all this run in here where it has a small little fair value gap. So now think about what's been shown on that 15 minute time frame. We have a minimum threshold of at least reaching into this low. Okay. Remember I showed you on the 15 minute time frame that imbalance. So it needs to get up into that. Okay. So I'm answering the question that I saw, or it really wasn't a question. It was someone trying to make a point that was I showing something incorrectly by showing a higher time frame fair value gap because wouldn't the smaller time frame fair value gap form before the higher time frame? No, it never works like that. The higher time frame imbalances are going to be parent to the subordinate smaller time frames. 
okay? The parent, okay, is this 15 minute time frame in balance. So it needs to get above that. But when it does that, we have to look at the lower time frame below 15 minute time frame, which is the beginning stages of our fine tuned entry of five, four, three, two, and one time frames. So here we have the five minute chart. We have an imbalance right here. And then we have that smaller one right in here. And all up to this price point here, we could factor that in, but it's not likely to get up there. So we can look at what? This level here, that is the minimum expectation. You can put a uh, sell limit order there to go short, or you can fine tune this to rebalance all the way up to here, right there. In other words, it would look like this. This would be your imbalance on the five minute chart. And if it traded up into that right there, okay, in other words, you could use any tank, any specific price in this range here you can pick. This is where the unique style for you comes in. If you get greedy, you may not get your fill. So I'm teaching you the low threshold entry, but that always will give you the highest risk. But that higher risk in terms of number of pips, not in terms of the amount of money, because that part is always controlled by you, the trader. You can manage the amount of leverage you're using. And it doesn't matter how many pips of risk you have, the amount of allocation in terms of the leverage that you're using in the trade, that's the most important thing. And that's the most important thing that gets abused most of the time by traders. Because every time a trader gets in the marketplace, their expectations are, how can I make the most? And they don't necessarily think about the other side of that sword because if the edge you're trying to chop with, okay, or swing, if it makes contact with what your target, then yes, you are profitable. But if it comes back and hits you in the head, okay, you're burying that ax right in your skull. So that leverage is going to be counterproductive to you. It's going to hurt you at that point. It's not going to be beneficial to you. It's going to harm you. So I'm teaching you the low threshold entry, but I'm also teaching you in addition to that, I'm showing you how to build an additional perspective that helps you find the better entries that allows you to shorten the number of pips or points if you're trading with the index futures. Okay. But long story short, this would be your range you can work within and it trades up into that secondary fair value gap. Now, some of you might say, well, what happens if I put a limit up here? Well, that would be obviously a stellar entry, but you don't necessarily need that. Okay. Uh, why I like this one is because if you look at the 15 minute time frame, it was like this. That was the range. Okay. So if we go up in that range to the upper end of it, look over here. What do we have? All three of these candles here. One, two, three. The order block begins with this candle's low. It's one, two, three candles making one consecutive bearish order block. Some of you are commenting in the section of the video saying, I thought I understood order blocks. Now I'm confused because you're hearing people parrot what I've said in certain circumstances and they don't understand what an order block is. Okay. This is why I get upset when people try to teach what they heard me teach about one or two times. And the buzzword is what's being tossed around. So that way people can sell their courses and get clicks on their videos. You have no idea learning about order blocks from anybody else on YouTube. I'm going to make it very plain and make a blanket statement right there. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings because I know a lot of you out there that try to talk about order blocks. You have a lot of respect for me, but I'm trying to correct you because I know you have a large audience and some of you have a very large audience and you're doing things that are not accurate. Okay. So I know you're watching my videos. So that way you'll correct what you're doing. So that way you're, viewers won't be harmed or they won't use something that's done incorrectly and dubbed as my order block. And if they have hardship or difficulty doing it, it's not going to be attributed to the concepts being effective because they are effective. It's just, they haven't been taught properly. Okay. It's easy to talk about it in hindsight, but it's real hard to do it in real time. 
unless you know what you're doing. So the logic is we, we ran up into this daily fair value gap. That's what this level is up here. This red line was those relative equal highs on the hourly chart. Remember that? And you're going to probably need to watch this video a few times because I've gone through a lot already. But I'm breaking down the market. And this run here is the run into that imbalance and above the relative equal highs. So this is the bearish order block. It's the consecutive run on this time frame, the five minute chart. It does not need to get up into this last up close candle before the down close because that's what everybody says an order block is. It is not that. Notice it doesn't even get up to that, does it? Why? Because what I'm showing you here, what makes an order block valid? It has to have an imbalance. Without the imbalance, there is no order block. That's why it's not supply and demand. Okay, there are specific rules. I'm going to cut through candles. Supply and demand requires fresh zones. Okay, that's nonsense. I have no affinity for anything like that. I'll cut through fractals and go through and find something over here and still trade on it. So it, it violates the supply and demand theory right there. So I, that's the distinction and why I laugh at people that say, oh, he's teaching really nothing new. I'm really teaching you something that no one's talking about unless I talk about it first. They're saying what I said. And not to sound egotistical, I'm not trying to be egotistical, but I, I want you to learn it correctly, folks. Okay? I only want to see you do it the right way. Because if you do it the right way, you will find the results you're looking for. If you don't want to do what I'm teaching, you're not going to be consistent, you're not going to find longevity, and you're going to get frustrated, and you're going to think that this stuff doesn't work because you didn't learn it properly from the person that created it. The order block is all three consecutive candles. The reason why this last up close candle is not even traded to is because the higher time frame parent imbalance, that 15 minute time frame, which is being shown here, that range of that low and that candle's high here, it stops there. So there's no necessity for it to trade up into that last candle. So if it trades up into this candle here, the bottom one, the last one of the three going up, that's enough for me and take that over here and then we have this imbalance so in my mind this imbalance is sufficient we don't need this one and you wouldn't expect that last up close candle to be traded to so this is the ideal scenario that i think the mentorship on youtube should be looking for now as soon as you have this this is one you settle in on what are you met with another little fair value got right above it so what were the rules that I gave you when it has that in the chart? Think. It is going to be a likelihood that it could trade up in there, but your limit order to enter is down in here. Because it might not get up here. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to teach you how to avoid missing trades because a lot of you are going to want to put an order up in here. And yes, it would have been filled on this instance. But many times you're going to have an order placed at a really overzealous price point that if you nail it, it's beautiful, but they don't happen a lot. It's fleeting. It happens once in a while. So I'm trying to give you something that it allows you to operate consistently, gives you lots of setups that will allow you to practice. Also back test, like I'm showing you here. This is how you back test because this has already happened. But these are all the things that I'm teaching you in this mentorship. And I've talked about this level here in my own private group beforehand. And you also knew about the bias being bearish on this pair from Tuesday's trading or Tuesday's episode in this mentorship on the YouTube channel. Okay. So we had a break in this low here. So there's an internal shift in market structure. It's bearish. We have the imbalance here that's been refined down into the five minute chart in concert with the bearish order block the lowest down close candle. We've talked about why we're not looking at the last up close candle before the down move. So we're canceling all that misconception. And it runs up into the level with the rule I gave you. If we settle in on a fair value gap and it has a small one above it, expected it might trade up there. So your risk has to incorporate that. So that's the reason why I'm telling you your stop loss could be here. Yes, it might be a little bit too rich for some of you because you want to trade with one pip stop loss, a half a pip stop loss. <laughs> There's a lot of guys out there trying to do ultra, ultra short term stuff. You might be able to pull it off once in a while, maybe, you know, a series of trades. But I promise you, when you start putting down size on these trades, you're not going to be able to pull that off. 
Okay, it just isn't going to happen, so don't get used to trying to do it. Okay, plus it's easy to do other things. You can walk away from the charts and not be chained to it because if you have a small ultra short stop, I don't care how good you are, you're going to sweat it. You're going to be expecting, you're going to get stopped out. What happens if it stops me out? I'm not worrying about getting stopped out. I'm not worried about if the market moves to my stop. I'm more interested in the market moving where I think it's going to go. Where is that? That's this level down here. That's the 6th of April's low. Okay. Yeah, we went lower than that already here. Let me get this thing out of your way. If you take this and move it out of the way here, we have the an early run at uh, 5 o'clock or so in the morning. It made that at 525 New York local time in the morning. It swept the previous day's low. So the 6th of April was swept. Then we rallied up and we hit the level that what? Our bias called for. In other words, I'm looking for this level to be traded to before I go short. So I'm not taking anything in London. I'm not worried about anything in London because London didn't give me the initial rally higher into this area. When does it go up here? It's going up there at 9.30 in the morning, New York local time. So it hits that level. It's at a really rich premium. And I know my discount level I'm looking for for targeting. So here's the framework, the setup. We have our market structure shift. We have disqualified all these upper candles here. The lower candle, that's where you're going to aim for. What's the order block that you trade for, Michael? What's the one? What's the right order block? How do I pick the right order block? I just answered it. What is an order block? It's a change in the state of delivery. The algorithm changes its state of delivery. As soon as we get below, this candle's open. The market starts delivering sell side. And then it breaks this swing low. So now we have changed gears internally. Any rally after that is just setting up another run to go lower. So in other words, this is a suspect rally. Okay. So this is an intermediate term high. Swing high. Because it has the imbalance. It should not trade higher than that high. That's the reason why I'm telling you, you can put your stop loss there. See how the rules are coming together? I'm not complicating it. I'm literally telling you everything I've taught and I'm putting it into the chart. Everything was said before it happened. And here it is. It's the framework. It's the logic. And I'm teaching you with great detail that you otherwise would have never learned. So I'm taking you in over top the chart, giving you the framework and giving you the logic. I'm giving you the what if this, what if that conditions. Okay, I'm telling you how to negate certain order blocks that you would otherwise expect to see it trade to because of different YouTube channels or other people trying to teach my stuff and they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, they have no idea what they're doing. This setup here gives us a nice opportunity to get short. So you could be a seller here on a limit entry. So you place your limit order here and you just walk away from it. You let it go. Now, what happens if it doesn't fill you by 1130? Pull the order. It's it. Don't put a you know, good till cancel. Just pull it because you want to be entering on the day that it creates this because relative equal highs, if it doesn't drop off, it could come up in a, at a time of day where you don't really want to be there and it could fill you and then keep on running and take out the relative equal highs at a deeper pass and then stop you out. So it's important to know why the kill zones are there. Kill zones are when you determine your entry and you place your orders and you walk away. You don't need to have your entry filled inside that kill zone window. Your order idea and your order placement needs to be considered at that time. If you can't derive a order placement for setup or trade entry by that time, you have nothing to do. And that's it. You've, you've basically taken no risk on and you have to wait till the next trading opportunity or trading day. And then the market obviously starts to break lower. And then trades to it here at 245. So at 245, it fills it, and that's the end of that. So not bad. It's 10, 20, 30, 40 pips. So there you go, 40 pips. You don't get the very highest high, and it ultimately goes a little bit lower. Who cares? You've, you've structured a trade that makes sense and it's just a really nice run up there and everything's delivered on the basis of 
the logic and the elements I'm teaching you in this YouTube channel. And you can't argue with it. It's, it's obvious. It's so plain to see how these markets are being delivered. And if you're one that likes to argue and say there isn't an algorithm, or if you say that these concepts don't work and all that stuff, it's because you want some excuse why you can't do it yourself. And I don't want any of you to feel that way. Okay. I don't get a high or, you know, get my rocks off because people stumble and not do well with this because I know why they're not doing well. You're not doing the work that's required. That means going through your charts and doing what I just did here every single day and being passionate about it, looking at what it is that has been shown in price action. What is it doing? What is it not doing? The things I've taught you in this lesson tonight is, in my mind, it's charter level teaching. It literally is something that I would generally reserve for charter members only. That means the people that have been with me for a year or more and they're under my tutelage in my private community. So this is a lesson that literally would come from that type of student level. But I'm applying it to what you're learning with this model. It's applicable to Forex. It's applicable to bonds. It's applicable to gold. It's applicable. Let me put this in because I see a lot of people also saying, can you show it in gold? Gold is one of those markets that is an event driven market. Okay, and what that means is it usually requires some kind of geopolitical or something crazy causing it to move. Otherwise, it's highly manipulated. There's a lot of stop hunts and then consolidations. It's very frustrating. Okay, it's it's not a it's not a market I believe that someone should be aggressively short-term trading. I don't think that's the ideal market. There's plenty of other markets out there that you can do that with and have better you know, consistency and longevity. Now, am I saying there aren't people out there that are making money consistently in gold? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, because I'm speaking to people with the expectation that you're just now learning how to do this. I'm aware that there's a lot of you that are veterans that, that have been trading longer than the average person coming to my YouTube channel. But I have to speak in a language that is palatable for a new viewer. Otherwise, I'm going to speak too, and this might be too lofty <laughs> for a new viewer anyway, but it, hopefully it will intrigue them to see that there's a rhyme and reason to everything I'm teaching, and they repeat. It keeps happening. Every single day, these signatures repeat. So the question is going to be is, what are you going to do with this information? Are you going to just say, okay, well, this is great, but this is too much work, so I'm going to look for something else that gives me a moving average crossover or some kind of a bell and whistle to put things on my chart to tell me what to do. And then you're basically creating a religious trading style because you're trusting something other than price. Because what have I shown you here? Just price. There's no indicators here. I'm only putting these areas in here with this rectangle to highlight an imbalance. I don't have these on my chart. In time, you won't either. But in the beginning, while you're learning, it's important to annotate your charts so that way when you log them in your study journal, that way at the end of the week, you go back and look at all the intraday price action. Then you look at how the weekly chart worked within that whole panoramic view of intraday daily price action. How did it all fit together? And by doing that, you're literally getting snapshots of every individual day, then the daily chart and the weekly chart and how it fulfilled its entire weekly range. When was the high formed? When was the low formed? What was the biggest day of the week? What was the framework around that biggest day of the week of movement? And then also break down, obviously, like we're showing you here, where trade setups, it doesn't make a difference if you didn't trade it. Everything anybody ever learns is always done by hindsight. You want to be a doctor, a surgeon? Guess what you're doing? You're working in hindsight. You're studying medical journals that, about things that took place that you were not there. Okay, you're studying hindsight. Don't let these goobers out there try to discourage you from studying because I'm teaching you how you are going to get better at this. You do what I just showed you how to do right here and you do it every single day. You're going to develop your own style of keeping notes in your charts. I'm not going to do that here because 
I don't want to make a an example and feel like you have to do exactly what I said. Okay, uh, what do I mean by that? It's to me, it's fascinating to see people comment in the comment section of the videos, or they'll send me an email, or I listen to people that obviously are trained under me and they make videos in YouTube. I can hear my fingerprints or read my fingerprints in the way they talk. They'll say certain things, um, certain words, certain expressions. I can I can see my own fingerprints on them. This part, I always leave empty and I do the same way of teaching even in a private group because I never show them annotations outside of the things I'm showing because over here you might write an observation about something that you may want to further investigate that I might not even touch on in this discussion or lecture but it's important to you so you use the space in your chart to write those things down and then you come back to that chart on Saturday at the end of the week or Sunday if that's the day you're going to do it on and you revisit the entire week and you walk through the entire week of how it delivered how many pips did it move and how much risk would have been incurred in the trade so all those things work towards a model that you'll grow accustomed to trusting because you'll have back data and you'll have examples that you've trained yourself to see over time. And by doing this, your psychological makeup as a trader will be formed with these things in mind. So that way when you're watching price action, it'll leap off at the chart when it's forming. And you'll remember something you saw hundreds or thousands of times before that generally repeat over and over and over again. Does every single day look exactly like this? No. But there's a lot of similarity to the things I'm showing you here that repeat. So it's it's a matter of knowing what you're looking for. If two bears are walking in the snow, one's younger and one's older, and they're walking in the snow, will both footprints look exactly the same? No. But you'll recognize they're both bear prints, and you'll recognize which one's larger or older, and which one's younger. So that's what it's like when you're looking at these signatures and price action they are generally very close to one another in terms of repeating the same type of way but they're not going to be so identical that they're indistinguishable to the next one like you'll be able to see that that's a different day of trading but you'll still recognize these repeating phenomenon that is so telling in the marketplace, but you can't fully appreciate it right now because you're only now just becoming introduced to it. And maybe you've watched some of my videos, maybe you watched all of my videos, and you see when I do this and it resonates with you, you're like, man, I can, I get it because he's showing it to me. But then you go out into the chart and you try to do it, and it just feels like your chart doesn't is organized or it's not so obvious to you what you're looking for. That's normal. That's how it was for me for a long time in the 90s. For a long time, I struggled and floundered of trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be looking for. I'm teaching you the things that repeat. Your job is to keep going into the chart, annotating them, and keeping a, a, a running log, a study journal, of what the price action has done and what you're observing. You can't get hurt because it's already happened. The move's already happened. So you're studying it. So what you're creating is the greatest technical analysis book that you're ever going to own. And you're doing it in your own words, with your own work. Because when you buy a book, what are you getting? You're getting snapshots of something they're saying, this is the important thing about this particular chapter or the theme of this particular book. I'm showing you how you need to stop buying books. But there is no books out there except for the ones I put in that one video that's in my library. Honestly. That's it. No other books are necessary in trading, in my opinion. It's, just, it's the same garbage that's repeated and rehashed, and people are just trying to do a cash grab. You're not going to learn anything except for bad habits and flawed logic. Now, when you've created a study journal with thousands of examples, and you've been doing it for years, you're going to be astonished of how much of a technical analyst you are years from now and you'll be able to see a lot more setups that you just don't see like there's several opportunities in this time frame or this fractal here 
on a five minute chart. There's lots of little trades in here. I'm not going to go through and pick them all out because this is going to create a thousand different questions and you're going to miss or overlook the very thing I've shown you in this lecture. But this is a model that obviously works in this time frame, in this pair. It's in Forex. It's not highly specific only to futures. Notice that it's pretty clear, isn't it? It may not have been clear before I walked through it with you. But you learned, hopefully, a, a great deal of things tonight. You learned a little bit about order blocks, what makes an order block based on the fair value gap, how do you differentiate, how you look at the order block, how do you break it down, how do you invalidate the certain parts of the order block, how do you know it's not going to go in the upper half of the order block or the last up close candle before it goes down. I taught that tonight. So hopefully this has been insightful to you. And obviously, we'll be back at it again next Tuesday. Until I talk to you then, enjoy your weekend and be safe.